the worldwide loss of electricity reaches the nuclear power plants. Automated systems detect the electrical grid is failing and they shut off the reactors. But this is just the beginning. Emergency backup systems are sustaining the world's nuclear power plants. Automatic diesel generators have kicked in to prevent a catastrophic meltdown. But the diesel fuel won't last forever. At nuclear power plants, emergency diesel generators started working as soon as the electricity failed. But without power, this building and hundreds like it will soon cause an unprecedented disaster. This is the spent fuel handling building, where radioactive fuel is stored in cooling pools after it's used to generate power. The pool is 30 feet deep and filled with 400 tons of spent nuclear fuel. The result of atoms splitting to create nuclear energy. And split atoms keep releasing heat and radiation. The spent fuel is contained in zircaloy tubes, and they're dangerous. If they're not kept underwater, they'll quickly heat up to 1,000 degrees. They need to be kept in flowing, refrigerated water for years before they cool off. Nuclear storage sites can be found all over the world. There are 75 in the U.S. alone. The spent fuel is safe as long as the generators stay on and keep the water cool. But if someone doesn't refill them, they'll grind to a stop. The power goes off for good inside the spent fuel buildings. The cool water stops flowing. The temperature starts to rise. In just a few days, the water will boil and evaporate. And without people to stop it, a nuclear disaster greater than the world has ever seen is now inevitable. A massive dose of radiation, 500 times greater than what was unleashed on Hiroshima, will be released. For days, superheated steam has been escaping from the spent fuel building of this nuclear power plant. With no emergency power, there's nothing to keep the fuel from heating up. The fuel burns through casings and sets fire to everything in the room. Radiation equal to 500 atomic bombs is about to explode. This is a nuclear disaster, and there's no one to stop it. A deadly mix of radioactive particles spews from the plant. Some of them, like strontium-90, will be dangerous for 300 years. Plutonium will be radioactive for 240,000 years. Pine trees near the nuclear power plant are first to die. Radioactive particles cling to their bark and resin. Chlorophyll, which makes the trees green, is damaged, and as a result, they turn red. The last time a forest died like this was during the Chernobyl disaster in 1986. Radiation contaminated an area of 50,000 square miles, the size of Alabama. In a world without humans, this scene is repeated again and again. Nuclear power poisons the Earth we left behind. 
There are six nuclear power plants in Illinois. Radioactive smoke fills the streets of Chicago, the site of the world's first self-sustaining nuclear reaction. Fires break out at many of the 30 nuclear plants located in the eastern U.S. Each one is almost 20 times more radioactive than the Chernobyl disaster. Many of Europe's 173 reactors also ignite. Their spent fuel burns. Carried by the wind, the radiation is an invisible poison that settles over thousands of square miles. If we were still on the planet, it would cause cancer in millions of people. Giant plumes of radioactive smoke and particles spread across the northern hemisphere. Winds push radiation away from the reactors in Europe. If conditions are right, it could reach as far as North Africa. Radiation from some of Japan's 53 reactors drifts across the Pacific Ocean. The world's most remote islands are in its path. Rain washes much of the radiation from the sky, concentrating its deadly effects. Some areas become more deadly than others. Large animals flee areas where plants have died from radiation poisoning. But small creatures aren't as lucky. Many live on the forest floor, where leaves and soil are coated in radioactive particles. Radioactive beta particles can only penetrate half an inch into living tissue. For large animals like deer, their vital organs are spared a direct assault. But it's different for small animals. Their organs aren't so insulated. Radiation cripples them. In the worst hit areas, over half of the rodents and insects die. 